Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. The great thing about firearms is they make people feel empowered. The bad thing about firearms is they, make, they give people a false sense of skill set. People believe because the gun goes bang, that they can shoot a gun. And what I often describe to them is, okay, I can put a 13-year-old who's been watching mom and dad drive a car for years, mm-hmm. and they think, oh, I got this, put them in a car, they can put it in drive and make it go, but can they drive, mm-hmm. right? And and a lot, of, a lot of shooters, per se, believe that all it takes is to point the thing, make the thing go bang. Uh, to her point about building a, a kind of an academy. So we have that at the Range St. Louis, West here in St. Louis. Uh, where we have basically prereqs and we build you up and we have these courses all lined out. Um, and there are a decent amount of people that that do go through the progress and that take the courses and we build them up. Fast forward three years, these people are in the range all the time. They've taken everything. They're asking us for more and more and more. Uh, then we have the individuals that, you know, they'll come take a concealed carry class and now they're Rambo. Mm-hmm. You know, they're like, Nothing else you can teach them. No matter how you you expose their weaknesses, expose their flaws, and we've all seen them, those are the same individuals that will tell you they got everything under control and then come out and you see their shot group on their target and they're like, oh, it's just a bad day. Like, mm-hmm. no, you, you, you just don't. Because they Because they've never been exposed to any of that kind of force-on-force training. Mm-hmm. And that's how I've thwarted a lot of women out of purse carry is because I brought them into a force-on-force class and I'm like, I'm going to be your assailant and then they can never get their gun out of their mm-hmm. purse before I shoot them in the face 19 times. The, <clears throat> my other complaint with, with purse carry, and I've told my wife this, and she still carries in her backpack in her purse, is if the first thing somebody's going to do is try to snatch that. Like, even if they don't want to get into a, a altercation with you, you may have somebody run up, grab your purse, and yeah. try to run well, off. Well, because so. isn't that what they're looking there goes for? your gun. Isn't that what they're <laughs> looking for if they're trying to – I mean, mm-hmm. unless they're trying to do something obviously worse than that, well, they just, right? They're going for the purse. Most muggers just want your money yeah. and whatever's in your keys, whatever you got. They just want to snatch and grab. Yeah, yeah, yeah they don't They don't want to fight you. Well, you, you know what, though? That's because – it's. And it's I, I like to spread it, and blame is such a harsh word. It's not really blame. It's all about trying to educate people the best you can. But there is when it comes to purse carry, I don't like it. Even. I don't like off body carry at all. Okay. I don't like when people carry guns and bags and none so, of that. I so, think Kevin Dixie, you're saying you never purse carry? Not once. No, 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 okay. I could not resist that. That is not true. He bought a, he bought a carry purse when he was here for grand opening at Texas Gun Experience. Oh, he hey. did. Oh, where is the pictures? Like that between me and you, okay. um, but the, the, the off body carry, you know, especially in a purse, is it is risky, right? Mm-hmm. Obviously, if, if if you got a mugger, mm-hmm. that's the first thing they're coming for is your purse, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's this other thing where we've convinced, um, uh, I, and I see it all the time, to where the counter guys, and that's why the counter guys and boyfriends and husbands are the worst. And they all pretty much say the same thing and are always like, smaller the better. Mm-mm. And thus, when you make something so tiny, a woman is equating it to being able to put that in her purse. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, it's now it's out of my way, so I'm carrying a gun, cool. Um, to the force on force factor, you know, it's hard to get them to really see that. What they'll see is, unless you get them in class, and obviously they can see it quick. Uh, but what they see is convenience, right? Because we've sold guns so small, we like, oh, it's so convenient. And the boyfriends, the counter guys are like, small, small, small. And so they're like, yeah, now this is convenient. And and your your lifestyle, carrying a gun is not always going to be comfortable. And you have to make the decision if I want to sacrifice a little bit of comfort or if I'm willing to sacrifice my life. Mm-hmm. Um, and I can't, yes, and I can't tell you how many women have buyer's remorse over those LCPs. Oh, oh my God, so many people. Mm-hmm. And you're like, is- who, who who convinced you to buy that? It's, like, it's, you've clearly Bible. never shot. Well, <laughs> I think to go to what Kevin is saying, you know, just with in, in regards to the LCP, right? It's easy to sell. Small, cheap, like Evan is saying, mm-hmm. everyone pushes it. People go, oh, let me get this. And then ultimately, like, you'll run into issues. For me, for my hands, it's definitely too big. But even for Lola, let's say, that has smaller hands, eventually she'll realize she doesn't have, like, the recoil in that if she's trying to shoot it because, you know, you got to train with whatever you're going to carry. And so you wind up moving away from that very easily. You can't even manipulate it easily. You know, if you add in but, nails and stuff like that to the equation, you know it gets worse. When you do stuff like that, and, and don't give me, I just don't, I don't like that gun. I don't like the Smith and Wesson bodyguards. Just certain, those mm-hmm. are the guns I just don't like. Mm-hmm. And what happens is, 
simple physics, right? Mm -hmm. Think about the new earth shooter, female, male, whatever. Think about the new earth shooter. You're trying to walk them through this process. But the person at the genesis of it or close to the genesis that was by the sale of the gun sells one of those firearms. And all the things that you just said, Hank, are a a thousand percent true. And they get down to the range. They're just going to the range by themselves to get comfortable shooting a gun. Mm -hmm. And they shoot it about two mags and they're like, okay, this hurts, this sucks, I'm not enjoying this. Mm -hmm. And they walk out, now that thing is collecting dust somewhere and they they don't want to, either they can't afford to make another investment. We all know that uh, guns are worse than cars. Once you buy it, you're gonna take a loss if you try to get rid of it, right? Mm -hmm. So shop is gonna buy it back for like 75% reduction in cost to be able to make a profit off of it. And so now you're starting somebody down a, a rabbit hole that seems like it's just gonna get darker and darker and darker for them. It's uncomfortable, they don't like the gun. Instead of you taking a taking a chance, taking the time I should say, to really coach and mentor somebody even up until the purchase. Most ranges have loaner guns, most of them do anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, have people rent a gun and get what's comfortable for them. The other thing that people, counter guys, boyfriends and husbands need to stop doing especially, is trying to tell somebody what gun is the best for them. You have no freaking idea. You don't know what's best for somebody. Um, even somebody walking into a range and, and they'll ask me, the woman always comes up, oh, I just want a little nine. And, I, you know, it's not too much. So I'm like, OK, I always equate to something I believe that they know. I said, you know, what if I told you I had a size nine shoe and I needed a size nine shoe? What would you say to me? She's like, well, what you want, a flat or stiletto? I'm like, exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? Sense, yeah. So let's start there mm-hmm. and let's let's, let's kind of, you know, really good. That are out there. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, mm-hmm. and that's just how I do it. I go to something they know. And I normally look at how they're dressed. And I'll pick something on her, you know, their their body to be like, you know, oh, she likes shoes. Obviously, she has a nice pair of shoes mm-hmm. on and go there. And, and, and then what you have to be able to do is make them feel powerful in the selection process. Don't educate them to the point to where they feel like, oh, I'm you're going to help me. But now I'm educated enough about what you've shown me and talked to me about and what I've experienced that I can make an educated choice. Now they have equity and investment into the choice they made instead of somebody just saying, hey, here's a gun. Now go shoot it, especially the sales guys that are looking at a commission check or looking just to say I sold the most guns this month. Mm-hmm. Cabela's is horrible for that. Mm-hmm. Horrible for that. Mm-hmm. Right. So we never at investing yeah. in the individual at the beginning and making sure they are involved in a customization process from buying the gun through their development. Mm-hmm. Very good, very good. I noticed. I, I noticed you were clapping there. So um, let's. I just want to go back to the purse carry for a second before we go away from it. Right. Is there a scenario where the purse carry it, it works, or is it like a hundred percent? Is it a hundred percent wrong? It's so. I would tell you that you know, obviously, if you're going to do it, it's you know, it needs to be a crossbody bag. Um, but I don't really, I can't really think of a scenario in which you would carry a purse with a gun in it versus carrying on the body. It's kind of like raisins. Okay. So like, can you, can you make things with raisins and they're pretty good? Sure. But they're always better with chocolate chips. (laughs) For example, a box of raisins. Are gross. <laughs> a box of chocolate chips is always going to be better than a box of raisins. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So raisins you're really are never not good doing to me. yourself, Mm-mm. you know, yeah. Yeah. any favors. I mean, oatmeal raisin cookies, good. Mm. Oatmeal mm-hmm. chocolate chip cookies, better. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I think that we need to, you know, that, that, and that's the one thing that we really need to start. Like I got so irritated when they, when, when they wanted me to go shop for concealed carry purses to put in the inventory here. And I'm like, why if we carry them like we're it's like we're advocating for that Mm -hmm. you know and that is one thing to kevin's point that the industry does is they make a lot of stupid gear for women and market it to women that's not even necessary oh like (laughs) that's the firearms industry in general yeah Yeah. i mean a lot of the gear that women can use is gear that men have always used we don't really pop a different color on it that's yeah pink pretty much it pink that's the solution to get all the the money from the ladies yeah and i think outside of you know like amy robbins did a really good thing with alexa athletica she made a really good product Mm -hmm. of concealed carry leggings that women can run in Mm -hmm. um and they don't feel weighed down and she did she did a really good job with that but really outside of that there's not a lot of products that are customized who was that again women who did you just um amy amy robbins oh amy uh, amy with alexa athletica yeah Mm -hmm. she made a great product and i beta tested a lot of her stuff Mm -hmm. um and and it works and so I think that, out, but really outside of that, I really haven't come across 
any big products that are marketed toward women that I'm like, oh my God, I can't live without that. Like I must have it and it's only for women. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like we just have to, if you want to get in this game and I'm talking to ladies right now, if you want to get in this game and you want to learn how to protect yourself effectively and you want to give yourself your best chance, you're going to have to really, you're going to have to really step into it and go, oh, but not if it compromises what purse I'm going to carry or not if it compromises you know, my comfort level a hundred percent or not if I have to wear a longer shirt, you know, like you're either in or you're out because if you're, if you're only halfway in, then you're going to put yourself in a little bit of danger because you're not making the time that you need to make to really learn this through and through so that you can carry a gun on your person while your kids are running around. Because the biggest, the biggest thing that worries me are distracted moms with guns. That have taken exactly two classes in their life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. With guns, with guns in their purse. Yeah, with guns yeah. In, hanging out in their purse, just mm-hmm. chilling. Mm-hmm. You know, and then they forget about it, like, you know, because you either you're either you're either not used to carrying, so you forget you have it, mm-hmm. or you're so used to carrying that you forget you have it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And and I see, you know, and I hear horror stories in my classes of women all the time. They're like, yeah, I got my LTC, and then I I went to the bathroom and left my gun on the back of the toilet at the gas station. And I'm like, you can't, like, that's why you have to continuously train so that you don't make those kind of idiot mistakes. Yeah. Okay. I see. Uh, who wants to jump in here? Kevin, uh, did you want to, do you yeah, want to I jump think... in and then I'll also answer the question, uh, if you don't mind, do you think there is a, do, is there a, a use for uh, purse carry? But go ahead. So the, the, one, the one time that I would say, Potentially is if you but then with all the products that are out there. So it's, it's going to be a give or take because there are so many belly bands and mm-hmm. so many different things you can get. Mm-hmm. But I, I guess if you have on a, a nice tight fitted dress, right, you're going to a nice ball, maybe that tight little black dress. You're not mm-hmm. you're not don't have a tight rig or anything like that. Then and you want to carry something even to an elegant event. Then, I mean, maybe uh, maybe I can possibly see that um, just. I, I'm careful about telling people it's okay because they take it and run with it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I think that if you can avoid it at all costs, you should make it a last resort. Now, is it is is do they make the purses and things like that? Yes. Do I I crap on them? No. Um, but you know, if it, it's just it's just it's it's hard. It's really hard. I would tell any any woman not to off body carry in a purse if you can at all costs carry it on you. Um, you can research the products that are out there. If you don't wear jeans on a regular basis, Mm -hmm. the belly bands and things like that, that are more suitable. Mm -hmm. Um, and a lot of women are worried about, well, to get to some of the belly bands, you know, if I have on a, like a a one piece, I have to pull it all the way up. I was like, well, make sure it's the last show he sees. That's fine. You know, he's not going to be able to tell about it. It's it's okay. A little bit of distraction Uh, of your opponent is not going to hurt you. <laughs> but yeah, he gets starstruck by some candy he sees, and he gets the flash, and let him get the flash, you know. Um, and and then to, now everything Jared said was right. I like the way that she put it. You're either in or you're out. Like that was solid, because really that's what it comes down to. And and I think a lot of times two things. I think one, when it comes to women and self defense, we are naturally more gentle because they're women. But sometimes we need to spice it up a little bit. Like, you know, you, I can't I can't always boo boo baby you because guess what? The dude that's going to rob you, mug you or the chick that's going to rob you, mug you, rape you, whatever. Mm-hmm. They're not going to boo boo baby you. They're going to take what they want. They're going to do it with aggression. Mm-hmm. Um, so at some point you have to be be willing to push a little bit harder and get them into it. Now, that's going to be depend on person to person. You got to be careful with that. The other thing is once if the industry keeps pushing too many things that they say are female driven down their throats. And I've ran into this. Uh, Jared was even there once personally to see it happen. What happens is all of a sudden women think that all the training is molded around them. I have literally gotten into probably about 15 to 20 discussions about women asking me, well, how do you train me to defend myself against an attacker? I said the same way I train a man. You can't you can't ask for equality and then want everything to be separate. Now, yeah, we can do some individual beginner classes. We can do things to get you comfortable. Absolutely true. But once you get to a certain point, I don't walk into a classroom that's open. Like I'll I'll be in South Carolina next week. I'm not going to walk in there and be like, okay, ladies, when you do this drill, no, hell no. We are equal fighters and we're going to fight equally right now. When it comes to hand to hand, I might make some things to change just things like that. But when we're talking about pistols, uh, you fight just like everybody else fights. But there are a lot of women that have been so apt to the industry flexing and saying, oh, this is for women. Like 
I love it when I see the gun for women and stuff like that. You know, now they're thinking that that involves all their training too. Like, oh, that that class is, oh, that's a that's a draw from the holster class. Oh, you guys are moving behind barricades and stuff like that. Oh, where's the one for the girls? Like the one with the dudes in it. Yeah. You know, how, how, the, how, how does one design a gun that's for women? Paint it, like you guys say. Yeah, I mean that that's that's not necessarily true. I mean, the I think that when you I think you can make certain firearms that do fit women a little bit better um just because, you know, our our bodies and you know, the ergonomics The, of, the only one I've ever seen is the curve. Have you ever seen the Taurus um, curve? Have you ever seen no, that gun? Uh, but, I mean, no, I'm trying I, to think well, of Well, no, I've seen the Taurus curve. I'm yeah. just saying that I you know, I, I think that when you you know, different guns in different sizes typically fit women better, mm -hmm. but but they're all typically unisex. I mean, men can usually shoot them too if their hands are small enough. But um, but I, I love what Kevin said about you know when you're taking classes, man, we can get you ready. Um, you know, you can you can take your introductory classes with you know with a female instructor if you want to, um, and to get you confident enough to get to where you need to be. But at some point, you just gotta train with dudes because that's just the deal. You know, like you're never going to get any real world experience. I mean, when a man hits you in the face, you're going to know a man hit you in the face, you know, and you've got to simulate that as best you can in order to get that adrenaline dump with that tunnel vision. you got to train yourself and you're only going to fall back on the highest level of training or the lowest level of training that you have. And so it's, you know, I get, you know, I, I get that they want to learn with other chicks and they want to like share that together. But I think that one thing to, to Kevin's point that women do is they think that because they can pass a 50 round LTC shooting proficiency and, 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 and all the guys, like that's another thing that guys need to quit doing is quit goo goo gaga over the fact that a woman can actually shoot well. Mm -hmm. Like that's, you know what I mean? Because all that does is it, it does exactly the same thing as it would to a man. It inflates the ego. And then they think I don't have to do anything else. And there are a lot of social media influencers that I've met in person that I've seen shoot in person that aren't really that good. Mm -hmm. Okay. There are some of them that are that good. And there are some of them that are not. Mm -hmm. And then you see that and you go, well, all you're doing is, sh is shooting content all day. And you're not actually working on your skill. And so quit Googling over women. Like I want to teach so many women to shoot that it's not even cool for chicks to shoot anymore. Mm -hmm. It's just normal. Yeah. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.